I'd like to give you a, I'd like you to give a warm welcome to Aaron Ashley. Should I like run on stage? <laughs> Hello. Um, I just want to take a second and thank each of you for being here today. I want to thank Virginia and her awesome team who has put this wonderful show together and enabled and given me the opportunity to share a little bit of my story and hopefully connect and uh, in some way my story will hopefully help you. My name is Erin Ashley. I'm a former fitness competitor. I'm a trainer. I'm an account manager for one of the leading supplement companies in Canada and my most important job today is the mother of my beautiful little nine-year-old daughter, Michaela who you might see wandering around, making friends with everybody. <laughs> so, um, so what I'm going to be talking to you today about is a little bit about my journey, and then also giving you some tips and tools and strategies that I use to stand in fitness and health sustainability. So if you look at the picture here, I don't know if you can see it too clearly, I look really fuzzy on the left there, but this was roughly about seven years ago. And what happened in that moment, or what happened around seven years ago, is I had an aha moment. I think we're all kind of familiar with the aha moment that's coined by the wonderful Miss Oprah Winfrey. So an aha moment is a moment of sudden recognition. Now my aha moment was when I went into the bathroom and I shut the door behind me and I dropped to my knees and I did something I've been doing for roughly 25 years. I put my fingers down my throat and I began to purge. And as I was purging, there was a knock on the door. And there's been many times in my life where I've almost been caught by family or friends and what was different in that moment was the voice on the other side of the door was my little daughter. And she said, Mommy. And as I rose up and I looked in the mirror, that reflection was something very common to myself. I vomit on my hands, on my face. My eyes were watering. My veins were bulging out. But what was different in that moment is I recognized if I didn't get a hold of this, that this could be her in 25 years. And in that moment, I got really sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was really sick and tired of hating my body for 20 plus years. I was sick and tired of constantly battling with food. And I decided in that moment, I had to make a complete shift and make a change. She became my why. And she became the reason why I wanted to make this change in my life and make the change not only for me, but also for her. You know, when your why becomes strong enough, then you're gonna find your how. So what I started to do is I started to look back at the different times in my life in which I did feel really healthy. Now, one thing I know that I think each of you might be able to resonate with me is, like, has everybody here been on a diet of some kind yet? Like lots, like everything, like I've done everything. So it's not the dieting. It wasn't that I, I didn't understand that I needed to eat proper food, right? And it wasn't even that I needed to work out because I knew that too. Because what ended up happening is every time I would diet, I would end up like this, <laughs> you know? Before long, I was knee deep and then I couldn't get myself back up. But what I began to realize, it didn't really have anything to do with knowing, it began to, it was my actions, it was my thoughts. So I began to look at cognitive behavioral therapy. And that's something they use with people who have eating disorders. It's actually something, I mean, I use every day now. Our thoughts create our feelings, create our actions. So I don't know if any of you have ever been in a situation at, let's say, work, somebody's birthday, they bring a cake in, you've been so good, you have been not falling off the diet, you have a piece of cake, and the rest of the day just tailspins. Because what happens in that moment, the rest of the day, you're just kind of like, screw it. Doesn't matter. And then the next day comes, you're like, I'm gonna wait till Monday. Your thoughts then take over what your feelings are, and then your action will follow through with that. So what I began to realize is when I began to have those thoughts, I had to catch myself. I had to stop. I had to take a minute. I had to also make a change, an immediate change in what my action was. So, and I love this saying, because you are today where your thoughts have brought you, and you'll be tomorrow where your thoughts will take you. One of my biggest things I battled with was my internal chatter. We all have that mind chatter, that nasty girl that tells you you can't, you're not good enough. And that was also part of my thoughts, creating my feelings, creating my reality and my action. So what I began to do as well is recognize that that nasty girl, I actually gave her a name. So then every time she showed up, it wasn't me, it was, oh, okay, I see you. But you don't have any validity in my decisions and I don't have to pay attention to it. So if you think about it, the things we can often say to ourselves, we would never say to a friend. I think we all can pretty well <laughs> agree with that. And if somebody said those things to our child, we would just be completely like, yeah, I think the mom, you know, the mama bear would kick in. 
So, but yeah, we will have those conversations with ourselves. We give it, a, we give it the validity to listen to it and think we're not good enough. So what I began to do is recognizing that my chatter was just chatter. It was just that voice, and I let it go. And I didn't give her the recognition she needed. I didn't fall prey into it. So that was a big thing for me. And then I also, what I would do, it was I would stand in gratitude. <laughs> Unlike this cat. But um, I would say five things I was grateful for. And they could be little small things. In the beginning, they were really small things. So stuff like, I'm grateful that I can move my body today. And I might not be the size that I want to be. And I might not be able to move as much as I want to. But eventually I will be, as long as I'm continually putting those thoughts into place. Because I'm going to create the feelings of love and support to myself. And then my actions will be different as well. So after I kind of tackled that a little bit, and I began to use that more in play with my day to day, I began catching myself. When my anxiety began to kick in around food, I'd say different things to myself. I'd say thoughtful, I'd say grateful um, thoughts to myself. Then I began to look at nutrition as well, which is obviously a piece of the puzzle. Nutrition is a very big, important thought factor in it. But the biggest thing was knowledge. I had to begin to understand what my body needed to give me the best energy, make me feel vital that I could possibly have. And even though I was a trainer for many years, and even though I was a coach, I still really didn't know what I needed, like what my macros, what I needed to have. So does anybody here know, do people know what macros are? Anybody know what a macro is? I've got a cookbook for somebody who knows what a, you know what a macro is? What's macros? Micronutrients are your multivitamins, right? So we have to have our macros. We have to have our proteins, our fats, and our carbs. Now, if we look at what protein does, protein creates lean muscle tissue. A lot of the time, the talks that I've given, a lot of women are very scared to have too much protein. They think it's gonna make them big and bulky like a bodybuilder. Well, not, I promise you. Do not have the testosterone to make that happen. But protein will actually help make you full as well, okay? So most people need to have about 50 to 20 grams per meal. How you can figure that out is you can take your body weight, times it by 0.8 or 0.5, and that gives you a rough estimate how much protein you need to have on a day-to-day -day basis. So some good examples of lean protein would be, does anybody have some good examples of protein that you can give me? Eggs, yeah. Nuts would be a good fat. That's a good, no, that's good, that's a good fat. Um, they'd be like fish. Fish, chicken, whey protein, there's some great vegan proteins out there too. So those are great sources of protein that you can have. Think carbohydrates. Carbohydrates give you energy. So we've got sweet potatoes, you got your root vegetables, you got rice, you got oatmeal. Those are carbohydrates. What I have found in working with uh, most people is if you stick with out, like, under about, well, at least for, especially for women, under about 100 grams a day, that's usually a good sweet spot for people, for women at least. Um, if you kind of tend to go over that, depending on your carb sources, then you're not utilizing it. You're not using that for your for your day to day activities. And then we got fats. So fats are for energy, your hormones, your brain regulator. It's also it should be about 35 to 40 percent of your diet. I tend to have a higher amount of fats, a little bit lower carbs, and protein. That's what I found is kind of the sweet spot. And then we look at portion size. This is actually a really cool little chart. This is something else I began to use because of the fact I would go into my binging and I. This was a great way when I was out to really kind of keep check on how much I was eating every single time. So if you look at this, like a fist would be a cup, which is really great for a sense of rice or vegetables or carbs. The fingertip, I'm not going to give you the finger because that's not very polite, but that is like mayonnaise <laughs> and your butter. Um, you got a cup of like for nuts. I have this PowerPoint as well, so if anybody does want it, I can send it to them or send them this example so they can actually have that. It's a great little tool to have when you're out and about. Because a lot of the times our servings, when we're going out for dinner, are a lot bigger than this. But we kind of have our own measuring cup right here. So that was something else I was really able to utilize. Another thing as well was water. I found a lot of the time I wasn't really hungry. I was more so thirsty. And so by taking more water in, that also would get me more full. I was more full. My skin would look better. I felt better. So a great tip with water, because a lot of the times we don't drink enough water. So, and a lot of time we lose track of how much water we're drinking. So if you have a cup like, or one of these, this size, right? You put four elastics on it. And every time, you might not need the elastics, but, <laughs> but you can still have some. <laughs> and for women it's great because then every time you can either just put it on here, or every time you drink water, or use it in your hair and have a really pretty, you know, ponytail, either way. 
So just every single time you have a water, you take one off. And those four, every time you've had them, then you, those four will be the four you need to drink for the day. And if you have more, that's even better. So I found that's a really great tip to kind of keep me on track with my water drinking as well. And then food planning. So when I began to look back at my competitive career, because every time I would do a show, I was really good. Like I didn't have any issues with bulimia. I wasn't up and down. I wasn't having issues with food. I wasn't binging because I had structure. So when I began to look at that, I thought, well, I can't eat like the competitive way all the time because that's not where I want to, that's not fun, really. Fish and vegetables is not a fun life all the time. So, but what I did realize, if I was able to take that food planning ability and put that in my day to day and having more structure, because I operate really well in structure. And so if I have that structure Monday to Friday or whenever it can work for you, then that gave me the ability to have these, every day I had my meals planned. And in the beginning I had to be very diligent about that because of the fact I was still very prone to be triggered. So I also didn't have, back to the food thing, I'll say this quickly, I also didn't have my triggers in the house. Part of my triggers was cake batter. I took that out. We didn't make cake in my house for over a year. That was just it. I couldn't do it. I was triggered by popcorn. It was something else. So there was just no popcorn. So I made, I made choices that fell in line with my, what my behaviors could be, right? So with food planning, Michaela and I, we do our food planning every day. We have our little books there, the slow cooking for the fast paced mom, and then we have, we just launched the air fryer book as well. We pre-plan all our food. We make them, we have fun, we do it together. And so what I can offer you guys today is I have on my site, it's a free seven day meal planner. And in that I've incorporated some of the recipes, but you can also go through that and you can actually use it. So it gives you different tools and steps. So the code for it, when you go all the way through to the, um, to the uh, checkout, the code for it is going to be WCW Show, and then you get that for free. And I'd love feedback if you have it. I'm launching a 21-day planner coming out in the next month. In that, we're going to have workouts. You're going to get 21 inspiration, inspirational quotes once a day. You're also going to get the meal planners and the books as well. They all fall in line, so then you're able to have consistency every single day and incorporate new and fun recipes. So you're not eating the same thing every day, or you can eat the same thing every day. It's kind of you can make it up to you what you want to do. But having structure and having, having my portions laid out was really important. I still bring my meals with me. I have my meals in the booth today. Whether or not I eat them if I have time or if I'm not going to grab something from here because now I can have more flexibility. But I always make sure I'm prepared. I wouldn't send my daughter to school with just a juice box. She gets her juice, she gets her snacks, she gets her fruit, she has some vegetables. But a lot of the time I think we don't put that priority into ourselves. And that's really important because if we don't love ourselves first and treat ourselves most importantly, then we really have a hard time, I think, giving that to others. Awareness. This was something else that's really important. This is part of the Food and You Planner as well. I put in, um, a lot of the time I think we're so disconnected from our body and from food. I mean, I don't know about you, but how many times you check to make sure the refrigerator light is on every night and just like, it's still on, I'm just checking. <laughs> and I'm not really hungry, you know, I'm just kind of, I need to fill with something or I'm bored or that kind of thing. So I began to be really more mindful of my food and chewing and eating slower. They suggest you chew it 32 times before you swallow. Who chews their food 32 times before you swallow? I don't even think I chew sometimes. I seriously think I just inhale. And then I'm like, oh man, I just like ate that whole thing. So chewing a little bit slower, taking my time, that also helps your body digest it better. It's easier on your system. It takes about 20 minutes for your body to fully recognize, okay, we're full. So taking the time and enjoying our food, I think is a really great thing. That's something else that I've applied and it's really helped me. Um, and so the questions I ask myself, am I hungry? Like just even pausing with that, like am I really hungry right now? Or am I just eating to eat? I think that's a big thing. We kind of are so disconnected. Um, am I full or am I bored? Am I upset? Do I have anxiety? You know, I, I really recognize how much of an emotional eater I am. You know, and throughout, now I can really see it. When I'm upset, I'm like, oh, there you are. My anxiety starts to kick in. I feel like I want to eat. And I'm like, okay. So I'm not really, I'm not really hungry. I'm upset. So maybe I'll go journal. Or I'll call my mom and I'll have a conversation with her. And I'll express kind of how I'm feeling instead of actually turning to food. My daughter, Michaela, and I do a thing called commercial break workouts. We're on at 1230. And I'm going to do a little play for you. <laughs> so <laughs> we, um, we actually do them in our living room because a lot of the time we don't have time to go to the gym. But I think it's a great way to kind of demonstrate to her to take care of her body and to have fun with it. I mean, I, I definitely for years was an, an all or nothing. So either I'm in the gym, hardcore, or I'm not. It's either binge or I'm not, or it's, 
I'm dieting or I'm not. Instead of being like, you know what, maybe some days I can't get to the gym, but I can do like 15 minutes in my house with her and have some fun with it and I'm moving my body. This morning I wanted to go to the gym, I did not have time. So I power walked my poodle. <laughs> So it's just making different choices and being okay with it and forgiving myself if it's not hardcore all the way. That's been a big thing too. Um, so I'm gonna get everybody, this is kind of another thing too that I really love doing. I'm gonna get everybody to hold their finger up and wiggle your pinky. And do you know that your brain tells your pinky to move before it moves? So there's a point in the day when you're feeling like you're not special or you're not magical or you're not here for a reason because I believe each of us is really here for a reason to wiggle your pinky and kind of remember how magical you are, how all these cells work perfectly to make you function. And so to honor that and take care of your body. I had a dear friend of mine pass away several weeks ago and she was a young mother. And when I look at that, I just think, how blessed am I to be alive? How can I not you know, be my best self? And that changes from day to day. <laughs> some days I'm really good and some days I'm not. And then that's okay too. And having flexibility with that, right? So, you know, the big thing I found that's really helped me is my thoughts. That's been the biggest thing, is how I, how I think. Learning to love myself a little bit more, giving myself permission to kind of mess up every now and then, because I'm not perfect, you know? Um, falling in line more with planning my foods, taking care of my nutrition, taking care of my body, listening, how foods make me feel. In the 21 day planner too, I have a, there is a point where you can write down how foods make you feel. If you find that you know you don't feel good eating oatmeal, then don't eat oatmeal. But pay attention to it. Be like, you know, I just don't feel good. Like I, I personally don't feel good eating oatmeal. That's my thing. So I don't have it. So paying attention to how you feel, planning your meals, drinking more water, moving your body. I think it's all things we know. But I think the biggest thing is what the conversation that plays in our head. So if we can start having more empowering conversations with ourselves and giving ourselves some more self-love, then I think everything then will kind of start to help form line. And the big thing too is to get out of your own way. I think um, I can definitely say I've been in my own way a lot of times in my life, whether it be with different relationships, or whether it be with food, or whether it be excuses. I think that's the big thing too, is finally stepping into who you're supposed to be. You know, I think, yeah, I just think we're so lucky to be here. We're so lucky to be alive. You know, this is, it's really amazing to be who we are. And I think if we can't, if we can't realize that and step into it or try to realize that every single day in little small ways, I think that's the biggest thing. And then I've got, um, so I'm in the back corner in my booth. So I have um, three books. I'm actually rewriting Believing It's a Balance right now. It's gonna be 100 pages. I've got a little bit more in depth. So, but we do have at the booth, I have the Slow Cooking for a Fast Paced Mom. So there's 21 recipes in there. And I also have the air fryer. I don't know if you're familiar with the T-Fell Active Fryer, but I just love that. Um, so I have 21 recipes up there and I have some samples of some of the fit nuts we make in the booth too. Um, and then I'm also launching in January, we're starting a Food New workshop, which is gonna be online. So once a week, it's different chapters. It's more so about kind of the relationship we have with food mentally, like how, how do we then step into a positive relationship with food? And then last but not least, if you'd like to follow me anywhere, <laughs> um, I've got Instagram, Erin Bella Ashley. I've also got Facebook, Erin Bella Ashley. I've got my Twitter, I've got Snapchat. Um, you can just follow me all the time. You just know what I'm doing every point of the day. It's so exciting. <laughs> um, and we also just started our YouTube channel too. So the YouTube channel, we do do the commercial break workouts. We film them, we're launching them once a week. So if you kind of want some fun, easy in-home workout to do, there's three exercises we do, 10 reps each, and you can do them as many times as you want. And Michaela is now leading them, so she's having a great time with that. So if you'd like to follow us on there, we'd love to have you follow us there too. And I just want to thank everybody for actually coming here and sitting here and listening to me and being engaged with me. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm more than willing to answer them. My website's erinashley.com. Yeah, so it spells a little different. It's A-E-R-Y-O-N-A-S-H-L-I-E. -E. So Air E on Ashley. <laughs> That's what my girlfriends, uh, when they plug me into their phone, when they're calling me on their wife on their like car phones, it's always like, Ari, hi. <laughs> so. What's the number of your booth? We are 124, right across from the, um, fit, the stage number two. Yeah, and then yeah, we're doing our workout at 1230. So if anybody wants to get a little workout in, I've got a nine year old that would just love to have your attention. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody. And I hope you had a great day. If anybody has any questions they want to come up and ask me, I'm more than willing to do that, too. So thank you so much.